not the greatest. We don't want the biggest numbers up there, we want the smallest numbers. That's why. So will it work every time if you find a different common number than me? Yeah, probably if you do your math right. But it's going to be easiest if you stick with the LCD, the lowest common number. Oh yeah, okay, okay, next one. So we have 5 sevenths minus 9 tenths. We need an LCD. Did you find your LCD? 4, 70. 70, that's right. Yeah, this time they have no common factors. If they don't have any common factors, you know your LCD is going to be the product of those two numbers. We multiply here by 7 over 7. Multiply here by 10 over 10. So I'm hoping that you've got 50 over 70 minus 63 over 70. Did you make it that far? Yes. Yes. Show me one more step. Let's go ahead and write this as one fraction. We'll have something over 70, and this number is going to be 50 minus 63. Change that to a plus negative if you want to use the addition rule or do the subtraction directly. I don't care at this point either way. If you do 50 minus 63, though, in either case, you have to be able to get the right answer out of this. Don't give me positive 13. Don't give me something like that. Don't Certainly don't give me something like 113. Give me the correct answer of how much? Negative 13. Negative, 13. negative good. Negative 13 over 70. And that's appropriate. How many people got negative 13 over 70? Good for you. That's fantastic. Okay, last one that we're going to do together before we move on. We have three fractions now. Did I do that? I need to change my problem here. I wrote the wrong thing on the board. Can I change it? Ah, yeah, whatever. We'll just do this one. We'll do both. Ah, yeah, we'll just do this one. It'll be the same thing. So, common denominator. What is our common denominator here? 14. Fourteen. Clearly 14. That was supposed to be a 4. I actually didn't put the little 1 there. So that made things way easier for you. That's okay. If that was a 4, if this was a 4, let's just do that. If that was a 4, would your LCD change? Yes. yes. Yeah. What would your LCD be 20, then? 28. Good. That would be 28. It's not. It's 14. I'll keep it 14. That way I don't mess everybody up. Sorry, my bad. And we'll go ahead and find the, the LCD. Well, it's 14. We'll find what the fractions are. Do we need to multiply this fraction by anything? No. no. This fraction? No. no. This fraction? Yes. yes. Times 2. two. What are we going to do to this fraction? Put the, put the, the negative on the top. Good. That allows you, when you make one fraction out of it, to have a negative on the top instead of a negative up front. That way you don't forget that that is actually a negative 3, not a positive 3. That's where people make a mistake. So we're going to have negative 3 over 14, minus 1 over 14, plus 12 over 14. We are certainly going to make that one fraction. On the numerator, we're going to have, this is why I moved the negative up, negative 3 minus 1 plus 12. Did you make it that far? Yes. yes. Good deal. We do our math. We know that negative 3, mi how much is negative 3 minus 1? Negative 4. Negative 4, very good. If it takes you the, the transition to make that, that addition rule, that's fine. You can certainly do negative 3 plus negative 1 plus 12. That's fine. You can do that still. If you do the negative 3 plus negative 1, that was going to give you the negative 4. And the negative 4 plus 12, you should be getting 8 out of that. Did you get 8? Yes. yes. And we're going to leave it 8 over 14, right? No. 4 7. 4 7. Simplify both by factor two, we get four sevenths. Hey, would you raise your hand feel okay with this, what we're talking about so far? Good, okay. if you're asked to subtract a whole number minus a fraction? Can you do it? What do you mean add a 1? Put a 1 and make the 1. Change it to a fraction. Okay, change it to a fraction by... Adding 1. Okay, one. Put a 1 in the denominator. Sure. It, we know that 5 is the same thing as 5 divided by 1. So we could do 5 over 1. If we do that, then we change a whole number into a fraction or anything that we want into a fraction just by putting it over 1. After that, we're home free. We've got to find an LCD. 
multiply appropriately, and then we'll be able to combine these. So first question, can you find the LCD between one and okay, three? One and three. Three. So LCD is three. Do I need to multiply one fraction or both fractions? Both. Use one. Oh, one. I've already got the three in one spot, right? Use one. So I don't need to multiply this one. I've already got the three. Don't worry about that. I do need to multiply this fraction. What do I need to multiply that by? Three. 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 First fraction is going to become how much? Fifteen over three. Minus this fraction didn't change at all. That fraction. Now we have 15 thirds minus y over 3. Okay. What's our denominator going to be? 3. Can you tell me what's going to be on my numerator? 15 minus y. Good. That all this practice making one fraction kind of pays off a little bit because now. Well, can you subtract them? No. Is that going to be 14y? No. 15y? 15 15y. 15 let me ask you this. Like are they like terms? No. Can you combine terms if they're not like terms? No. Then you're done. Yeah, that's it. You guys are ready for this. Let's try one more. Okay, let's focus on the board. We've got three fourths minus five over x. We got three fourths minus five over x. What do you need in order to add or subtract fractions? Not like terms. What was it? LCD. Does it have a common denominator right now? No. Okay. We got to find out what our LCD is in this case. Now, if you don't have, let's see if I have an example here. If you don't have a common factor, what we knew is that our LCD was a product of our denominators. If we have 4 and x, there's nothing in common between 4 and x. We don't even know what x is right now. So in order to find out a common denominator, we go, oh, OK. If they don't have any shared factors, which they don't, I know that the, the LCD is simply the product of those two denominators. In our case, that's going to be 4 and x. It's got to have both those factors up there. Are you OK with that one? Yeah. yeah. That's the only way we're going to have a common you just have denominator. Times that by times that by we do. Because they're not sharing any factors, we're multiplying those denominators. Yeah. So multiplied by x. Well, we're going to find out right now. Yeah. Well, see, we want we want 4x on the bottom, right? Yeah. I don't have 4x on the bottom here. And I don't have 4x on the bottom here. Let's work on this fraction first. I have x. <coughs> I want 4x. I have x. I want 4x. What do you need to multiply by to get 4x? 4. four. Sure, yeah. Is 4 times x equal to 4x? Yeah. Okay, make sure it's on both the top and the bottom. Now let's look over here. I've got 4. I want 4x. What am I missing? X. Multiply by x. Is x times 4 equal to 4x? Am I going to get that 4x yeah. that I want? Yeah. Okay. As long as you do both the top and the bottom, you're, you're okay on this problem. Let's see what this is. This x time, or x over x times 3 fourths, how much is that going to give me? 3 x over x. Good. You sticking with it? Yeah. Okay. We still have a minus sign. How much is this fraction going to give me? 20 over 4. 20 over 4 x. Good. Do I have a common denominator like I thought? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So it worked out. So we're going to put this together as one fraction. Of course, we're going to have 4 x on the denominator. On the numerator, I'm going to have? 3 x yeah. minus 20. Now, I have one very important question to ask you. I actually don't even want you to answer it. I just want you to think <coughs> think the answer in your head. I'm going to ask a different question that's going to clarify whether you're right or wrong. Okay? Don't answer out loud. Can you cross out the X with the X? Yeah. Yeah. I said don't answer out loud. 
hand. Or be following directions. Don't answer aloud. Can you cross out the X with the X? You see, I didn't want you to answer because I need to explain one more thing to you. The only time we're ever allowed to simplify, I hope some of you are listening out there, the only time you're ever supposed to simplify or allowed to simplify is if you are multiplying everything together. That would mean, sure, that's multiplication. Is that multiplication? No. The only time you're ever allowed to simplify is if you're multiplying everything together. That was the rule. That's it. So I'm going to ask you again. Can I simplify this no. x or this x? No. no. Definitely not. Not unless everything is multiplied together can you simplify it. See, I still have a lot of people in Math C, that's two levels from now, who look at this problem and will cross out the x. They're not going to pass my class. Uh, they're not. Because uh, they, they do that mistake all the time. That what, what's happened is by that level, if you're doing this, you're practicing a bad mistake over and over. If you've ever played sports, uh, your coach, uh, you ever played baseball? Yeah. You ever even swung a bat before? Mm -hmm. Probably everybody has. If you've ever played baseball, then you know that a swing is pretty important to your success, right? You have to have a good swing. And your coach will really hammer you if you have a bad swing. Because you, what happens is if you practice that swing over and over and over again, it becomes natural to you, right? It's very, hap it's very hard to break a habit that becomes natural to you. Do you agree? Very hard to break that habit. And so your coach will hammer at you because he wants you to break that habit to get a, a correct swing. This is a poor swing right here, doing this mistake over and over again. And once you get to math C, if you've done it so many times, it's natural for you to do it. I'm hammering you now. I have to make sure that you do not do this. Are you seeing the analogy? Okay, don't make that mistake and cross those out. The only time you ever can is if it would have been like this. Look, this is a different problem. Completely different. Now that those are multiplied, yes, absolutely, those are factors. I can simplify factors. I cannot simplify terms. There's a difference here. As soon as that's connected to that subtraction, you can't cross it out. If it's being multiplied, absolutely. Billy? What about if there was a point in the x, would you be able to simplify with a 20? Like that? Yeah. Here, you could not. No, and the other one. Right. Here, definitely you could. Okay. Here, here, since we're multiplying everything, you can. The reason why this works is you can separate those fractions out. Get your x over x times the rest of it. You get your 20 over 4 times the rest of it. You can't do that here. It's different. Different problem. Do you see the difference between those? Yeah. Are you sure? That's it. You cannot do anything more with that. This one, if it had been multiplication, yeah, we do a lot more with that. But it's not. If it's addition, you don't do it either. Yeah. Plus or minus. Yeah. Either one. Did that make sense to you? That was kind of a big deal. I needed you all to focus on that, so I waited for you. That one was kind of like the, that one you just did on the diagonal. Yeah, real similar, right? Because, yeah. I mean, can you simplify the 15 and the 3 here? No. No. Look at the board yeah. with me. Yeah. yeah. You can you simply the 15 and the 3? Yeah. No. Are you sure? No, because it's, it's um, multiplied. Okay, I, I need to see a similarity here. No, but it was multiplication. Can you simplify the x's? No. 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 Can you simplify the 4 with the 20? No. 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 Can you simplify the 3 with the 15? No. no. It's being subtracted. Look at this similarity. Subtraction, I can't simplify that stuff. Subtract, I can't simplify that stuff. Unless it's multiplication, you cannot simplify it. For addition, they're both the same, the same thing too, right? Whether this is a plus a or a minus, okay. right. The only time you can ever simplify is if you have multiplication. Now, do you understand that? Okay, so can I simplify the 15 and the 3? No. no. How about the x and the x? No. 4 and the 20? No. no. None of that stuff. Try one more on your own, okay? Oh, I have one, one question. Sure. Um, what if you only had 3 minus 20 and then um, a 4, like 4x or whatever? But like the, the number that yeah. was left 